Hey guys, Frank Schaller here. Welcome back to Nursing 220 Health Assessment and Physical Exam. This week, we're gonna be talking about the eyes, the ears, the nose, the mouth, and the throat. And today I have my son with me. What's your name? Ezekiel. Oh, hi Ezekiel, how are you? Good. Good, how old are you? Uh, four and a half. Four and a half, wow, you're getting big. All right, well, let's jump right into this, guys. So let's start off by assessing the eyes. So first thing we want to do when assessing the eyes is inspect the external structures. So we're talking about the eyebrows, we're talking about the lids, and we're also talking about the eyelashes. So Ezekiel, I'm just going to look at your eyes here. And looking at his eyes, I see that they are symmetrical and there are no lesions. And overall, the anatomy looks normal. Um, next, I'm going to look at the conjunctiva, I'm going to look at the sclera and the corneas and the irises. So when I'm looking at the conjunctiva, that's the white part on the eyes, and at least it should be white. And I'm not noticing any conjunctival injection. The sclera appear normal. I'm not seeing any signs of jaundice or pallor, anything of that nature. And then I'm going to look at the corneas as well and see if I see any type of obvious lesions. And I'm not seeing any lesions or abnormalities on his corneas. And then next, I'm going to check PERLA. So PERLA stands for pupils are equal, round, reactive to light, and they accommodate. So looking at Ezekiel's pupils, maybe I will use a pen light or I have an otoscope as an example for a light. And I will check both of his pupils and pupils are equal, they're round, they're reactive to light. And for accommodation, Ezekiel, look at my finger here. Follow my finger with your eyes. Good, and I see that his pupils are accommodating appropriately. So overall, I would say Ezekiel's eye assessment is PERLA. Moving on to testing the extraocular movements, this is cranial nerves three, four, and six, okay? And all I'm gonna do is ask Ezekiel to look at my finger, watch my finger with your eyes, okay? okay. Watch my finger. Good. Good. Extraocular movements are intact and they're not painful. Next, I'm looking for the corneal light reflex. All you have to do for this one is when you're looking at the cornea, you want to just see that you see a light reflex on the cornea. So just looking at Ezekiel's eyes here, I can see on both eyes that he does have the corneal reflex. Next, we are going to look at the six cardinal positions of gauge. So this is also very similar to the extraocular movements. So Ezekiel, look at my finger here. Follow my finger. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. And six cardinal gazes are intact. The positions of gazes are intact. And then moving on to visual acuity, typically here I would use the Snellen chart and I would hold the chart if I have the handheld card approximately, it will give you the directions on the card. So the handheld card is typically about six feet or so, or if you're in the hospital, about the head of the bed. And there are other Snellen charts where the patient is standing approximately 20 feet away from the chart. And you're going to want to check the visual acuity with the eyes open first and then the right eye, and then the left eye. And you'll report, maybe patient has perfect vision, and you'll say 20-20 throughout. Moving on. Okay, go on. Go upstairs and flush them out. Next, we are going to check the ears. And checking the ears, first off, we're gonna be using inspection. So I'm literally just looking at the external ears on both sides, his right ear left ear and I'm not seeing any lumps or bumps. The other day in the urgent care I saw a kiddo similar to his age and he actually had a tick up inside of his ear. So you want to make sure that you don't miss something like that. Moving on I'm going to be palpating the oracle and the tragus for any type of tenderness. So oracle. Does this hurt Ziki? No. No. Tragus. Does this hurt Ziki? No. No. Okay let's check your other one. Oracle. No. Tragus? No. No. Okay, so no pain to the oracle or tragus. And then moving on, we're going to do the otoscope exam. So hopefully you all have one of these, have purchased it. This one on Amazon was actually fairly cheap. And um, let's go ahead and do the otoscope exam. So what I'm doing is I am first inspecting the canal. I have my light on. 
I'm inspecting the canal of the ear for any obvious drainage, any lesions, bumps, maybe the end of a Q-tip, hopefully not. And I'm not seeing any types of lesions or foreign bodies. I have found all types of interesting things in people's ears. Um, I've found beads, I've found rocks, I've found bugs, you name it. I've seen everything in the ear canal. So the right ear canal looks perfect. It's patent, there's no edema. And then moving on, I want to look inside the ear to try to visualize the TM, also known as the tympanic membrane, or in layman's terms, the eardrum. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look. And his eardrum appears pearly gray. There's no erythema, there's no bulging. And I also don't see any scarring. Scarring typically appears white on the eardrum. And let's go ahead and make sure we do that to the other side as well. So Ziki, let's have you turn here. And then let's check this here too. So same thing, first looking in the canal. Canal looks okay. And then going a little bit deeper in to take a look at the tympanic membrane. And he actually has a little bit of brown colored cerumen, which is uh, just a fancy word for earwax. But the tympanic membrane itself, it appeared pearly gray. There was no erythema, there was no bulging. So that's it for the ear exam. Moving on to the nose, we're gonna start just by looking at the nose itself. And when I look at Ezekiel's nose, it is midline, it is symmetrical, there's no lumps or bumps or lesions or lacerations. And then maybe I will palpate the nose to see if there's any tenderness. Does this hurt, Zeke? No. No, good. Next, we're gonna test patency, and we wanna do that by occluding one nair at a time and asking the patient to breathe in. And you'll check that on both sides. And the key here is to ask them to breathe in because if you plug a nair and you ask them to breathe out, you might end up with a surprise and you don't want that. So Ziki, go ahead and breathe in. Good. Breathe in your nose. Great. And the nairs are patent bilaterally. Moving on to the mouth and throat. So initially I'm going to be inspecting the mouth. So I'm inspecting the lips the oral mucosa, the teeth, the gums, the tongue, and the palate, just looking for any types of abnormalities. So Ezekiel, I need to look in your mouth now. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a peek in your mouth. So I'm taking a look in his mouth, his oral mucosa, it's wet, it's pink. He has, it looks like all of his teeth. I don't see any obvious dental caries or cavities. Everything looks okay on my end. No signs of pallor as well. And then looking again inside the mouth, we want to look at the tonsils, the palatine tonsils more specifically. And we want to grade the tonsils if they're present. So Ezekiel, go ahead and open your mouth for me. Really big, say ah. And I see his tonsils towards his posterior pharynx and they, I would grade them a plus one, which means just very mildly enlarged. Um, plus four is kissing tonsils, where literally you see the posterior pharynx, the tonsils are literally kissing, they're touching each other. Um, that could be a sign of potential strep throat or some type of viral pathology as well. And then looking at the movement of the uvula, this is testing cranial nerves nine and 10. So all we're gonna do is ask the patient to simply say, ah, and you're gonna watch their, muv their uvula. Say, ah. So his uvula, it's midline, and it is moving appropriately. I don't see any edema, any abnormalities whatsoever. That's it, guys. That's it for the eyes, the ears, the nose, mouth, and throat exam portion for this course. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Ziki. Bye.